Sorry, grade six, my video stopped recording. My technology is just not working with me today. <laughs> but I think what I was saying, hopefully I can make a smooth transition here, but I think what I was saying was the Suez Canal, right? The Egyptians or the Egyptian government was not allowing Israel to use it. And then there was a potential for like a really big conflict to develop. But what ended up happening was the United Nations stepped in with a peacekeeping force that kind of diffused the situation um, to, to come to a, a peaceful resolution. Um, so that was in 1957. All right, let's jump ahead to the 1960s. And we jump to the country of Vietnam, which is part of Asia. I'll circle it for you here so that you can see it. So we've been doing a lot of talking about what's been happening over in Europe. And then it's not on this map, but if you were to go farther to well, the left or the right, I guess, <laughs> you could say you could travel this way to get to the United States or this way. <laughs> um, but now we're going we're gonna to focus on Vietnam. So the United States had become involved in South Vietnam. So this was another conflict where it was sort of like the, the capitalists once again versus the communists. Um, because Northern Vietnam was communist. So the United States really was getting involved in this country to, to try and stop um, the whole country from becoming communist as well. And there was a lot of disagreement among Americans as to whether or not the United States should be involved in this war in Vietnam. Um, a lot of Americans, even American men who were trying to avoid being drafted into the army, they wanted, they moved up to Canada, right, to kind of um, escape being sent to Vietnam. So lots of controversy about the war as to whether or not the United States should have even been involved, um, but they were involved. So if you hear about the war in Vietnam, at least you have some idea of what was going on. And they were involved until about the early 1970s. So over the next couple of decades, um, the relationship between the United States and Canada really grew and they became very strong trading partners. Now in 1987, Canada and the US signed what's called the NAFTA agreement, the North American Free Trade Agreement. And then a few years later, Mexico joined in as well. So originally it was just Canada and the US and then it was Mexico as well. And basically this agreement was um, to allow trade between the, the countries without a whole lot of restrictions, without um, a, a lot of things being disallowed. So really to promote trade between the countries. Now, actually, just this past summer, there was a new agreement. So NAFTA is not in effect anymore. The next, the new one, I think, hopefully, I'll check it later and let you know, is called the USMCA, right? U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement. Similar type of idea of um, a, a, a trade agreement between the three North American countries. All right, and we're gonna jump ahead to the early 1990s. So in the early 1990s, the country of Iraq invaded and attempted to take over the smaller country of Kuwait. So here we have Iraq, Kuwait. And um, the president at the time, George H.W. Bush, sent uh, American troops into the Middle East to attack Iraq and to try and free um, Kuwait from their their takeover. So um, it was about 100 days of fighting and the U.S. helped Kuwait become their own country again. So that's called the Persian Gulf War. Sometimes you'll hear it just called the Gulf War. And it's kind of the beginning of the United States involvement in the Middle East. Now, on September 11, 2001, some planes uh, flew into the Twin Towers in New York, and it was a, um, a planned attack on the United States by a, uh, a Muslim terrorist organization um, headed by Osama bin Laden. Um, so this attack on the United States, sometimes it's called 9-11, um, was a really horrible time in American history. Lots of people, once again, lost their lives. Um, everybody was watching this on TV. Um, 
people around the world were observing what was happening. And the United States really saw it as an attack on their country by these terrorist groups that were founded in the Middle East. So um, US President George W. Bush began what was called, or what was called and still is called, the War on Terror, which basically is military operations in the Middle East to try and take down some of these terrorist groups. Um, and Canada also has been involved in, like here you have a map, um, in Afghanistan, Canadian troops have been involved. And basically the, um, to try and stop these groups from taking over these countries and causing a lot of um, problems in those countries and also attacks on the rest of the world. So um, that is what is still ongoing today. A lot of the conflict and unrest in the Middle East is tied to this as well. And that is sort of where your history reading ends and that is where we're going to end today. Um, so once again, we could really only do sort of a brief overview, not a whole lot of detail or depth. But as you continue in your education, um, you will have some more opportunities as you grow older to learn more about these different events, these different things that were taking place um, in American history, but then also connected to world history again. So at least you have a little bit of an idea and hopefully a, a bit of a mental timeline of some of these main events that have happened. So make sure you